Good day, my name is Professor Billy Batai and today my presentation will be on social security. Now, you hear people talk about social security mainly in two ways. Either you talk to someone who's older, 65 and older, and receiving social security checks, and that person tells you about all the great things that Social Security has done for them because they're receiving money from the government. The other way that people talk about Social Security most often is in negative terms. They say that Social Security is a problem, it's too much money that we spend, and that it's going to make our entire country broke. So today we're going to look at both sides of the debate and then we're going to be able to decide. Now, let's start at the beginning. Let's look at our government spending. About 20% of our government spending is done for our national defense. So that's the military, that's the FBI, the CIA, special ops. 20% of it almost is spent on Social Security. So it's about the same amount. And then if you put Medicare and Medicaid together, you get another 20%. So just call that health care. So basically, you have about 60% here in these big threes. And then you have basically everything else, which is a little over a third of our government's budget. What is this everything else? Well, it could be bridges, it could be education, so for example, you know, higher education, anything else that the government does. Now, grant you, some of it is wasted, but still, if you really wanted to put a dent in our government's budget deficit, you wouldn't be able to just look at that. You would have to look at one of these big threes. You would have to cut one of them. Now, I don't know how many of you want to cut the military expenditure. I don't know how many of you want to live Medicare or Medicaid unfunded. So today, let's look at what would happen if we would not necessarily cut Social Security, but maybe change Social Security to help our government deficit problem. Now, Social Security is the largest transfer program. It's actually about $700 billion a year. Now, what's a transfer? Well, let's see if you remember what we studied when we looked at the GDP in our macroeconomic class. A transfer is when someone pays taxes, right? You work, so you pay taxes. And that money goes to someone else, and they receive it in the form of a social security check. That would be a transfer. Now, if you think about it, nothing has been produced. This is not like the government saying, hey, we're going to build Hoover Dam, and then there's going to be electricity for tons of people. A transfer, if you remember from our GDP lecture, a transfer actually has no production associated with it. So, yeah, people get money, but it's not really productive for our economy. Now, why do we have a problem of Social Security? Well, you have a few you know, suggestions as to where the problem comes from here. You could argue that our country is just not the same as what it used to be. And we're going to talk about that a little bit you know, further. How does the changing structure of the U.S. population contribute to the Social Security problem? Then you're going to have the baby boomer. So you hear that explanation given a lot to, hey, we have a Social Security problem because of the baby boomer. So we're going to talk about that. Then we're going to talk about this. This is really how our Social Security system is set up how it works, okay? People think that the way it works is, okay, 
I'm Professor Billy Bataille, and I'm working, so I'm going to pay Social Security taxes. And, and it's going to go into a vault with my name, and it's going to be the Professor Billy Bataille vault. And then when I retire, I just go to the government, and I said, hey, I want my money back. And the government is going to go look at that vault and say, hey, here's your money. This is what you saved up. Well, this is actually not how our system works. This is how our system works. So we're going to have to explain that a little bit. Now, this one is weird. How, did, how does better health care translate into a problem? Well, we're going to have to look into that. So, this is how our country used to look like in 1960. In 1960, you had about five people working and paying taxes, including Social Security taxes, to cover the expenses of one person that was retired. So it wasn't such a heavy load to shoulder, right? Five people had to come up with enough money to give to that one retired person. Look at how the situation is now. We only have about three people working for one person being retired. So it's a lot more difficult for these three people to come up with enough money to cover the expenses of that one person retired. But that is nothing compared to what's going to happen. Very soon, right, in about, you know, two decades, we're going to be in a situation where two people are going to be working for one person that is retired. Now think about it. Two people working, right? Let's just assume that they're married. So you're asking two people who are married to take care of their children, pay taxes, and then have money left over to take care of one retired person? That's going to be quite difficult to do. If you look at the elderly population, and you look at 1950, well, about 10% of the elderly population, well, 10% of the population was elderly. Okay, let's define the elderly as 65 and older. Let's zoom in to 2010, and what do you have? 22% uh, of the population is over 65. Now look at what's going to happen very soon. You have this steep curve. It's going to go all the way to 35%. So, in 2030, about 35% of the population is going to be 65 and older. Now that's a lot of people receiving social security checks. And this is what's going to happen very soon. Think about it, 20 years. You're not going to even see time pass by. Now this is how the social security system works. Yes, you work. Yes, you pay taxes. Yes, you pay social security taxes. But that money is not put into a special vault so that when you retire, you can take that money. What happens is your taxes, your social security taxes are given to the government. Then the government takes that money and gives it to someone who is retired presently. And then when it's you, you know, in 20 years, you're retired, then someone else who's going to be working then is going to pay taxes and that money is going to go to you. Now, we can see the problem in that. Remember, we used to have five people being retired, five people working for one person that was retired. And now, what do we have? We have two, three people working for one person that is retired. So, it's going to be a lot more difficult to find people who are going to be working to pay Social Security taxes so you can receive your Social Security check. Look at the life expectancy. Look at how things are in 1930. People get to live 60, you know, 56, 57 years of age. Then it slowly goes up all the way to about 78 years of age, which is basically the life expectancy now. Now, what does that mean? 
Well, this means, hey, we have a better healthcare system. People get to live longer. That's great. And it is great. But as far as the social security problem is concerned, it's a little problematic, you see? Because not only are there more people who are 65 and older receiving social security checks, but they're receiving it for a longer amount of time. If someone retires at 65, then they get to receive a social security check for about 13 years. So the government has to come up with money to pay social security for 13 years on average. So you can see where this is going, right? Social security spending going up. Why? You have more older people and then the people who are retired live longer once they're retired. So a lot more spending on social security. Then you have the revenue going down. Why? Because you have less and less workers paying into the social security system. So what do you have? Well, at some point, the revenues are going to be less than the expenditure. And when that happens, we're going to have to start, you know, eating in the system. And very quickly, somewhere in the 2030s, what's going to happen is that the social security fund is going to be dry. No more money for social security. Our government is going to have to come up with some way to you know, solve this. That you can't avoid this. It's not going to go away. So you're like, well, hold on. Why do we have such a complicated system that is so problematic? Well, okay, let's look one last time at the graph. Let's look at what happens, and then maybe we're going to figure out where the problem comes from. This is how many people are paying how much taxes into the system. This is the expenditure, how much money you have to pay out. It's going up more and more, and you see that at this point, this is where spending is actually greater than revenue. Then you start eating into the money you have until there's no more money. So why build a system that would do that? Well, because you never thought it would. Go back to, this is your granddad, okay? He's happy now, but really he wasn't really happy then. Why? It was the Great Depression. During the Great Depression, people suffered. People lost their jobs. When they lost their jobs, they had to eat less. Then they would not be able to pay their rent. They would be kicked out in the street. We said this is unacceptable. We cannot be a nation so united, a nation that says that we care about each other, a nation capable of great things, but have people, you know, just littering the streets because they lost their jobs. I mean, they haven't done anything bad. They just lost their jobs because the economy was that bad. We say, no, we are going to create a social net. What is a social net? Well, this is a really nice image. Just think about yourself falling. And then there's that net that catches you so you don't hurt yourself. This is what we thought of during the 1930s after the Great Depression. Actually, the minimum wage, I don't know how many of you are working on the minimum wage, right? It was thought of during the Great Depression. Social Security also. This is actually FDR, so Franklin Delano Roosevelt, signing the act that would make Social Security a law. But you see, he's doing that in 1935. You see, then people get to live 62 years of age. So, they do get Social Security checks, but not for very long because they probably die soon after. This is when the system was built. This is what the reality of the people then was. These people didn't necessarily conceive of an age where first our government would have incredible debts. Second, people would get to live to be 78 years old. This combination created the perfect storm. And so, 
Social Security did what it was supposed to do. You see the blue line here is the percentage of the population that is 65 and older. So in 1959, right, you have about 10% of the population that is 65 and older. And what do you have now? In 2010, 2011, 2012, you have a little bit more than 33% of the population that is 65 years and older. Now, the red line here depicts poverty amongst the elderly. So how many people who are 65 and older are poor? Now, what did you have before? A lot. About a third of the people who were old were poor, right? And look at what happens. Now, less than 10% of the elderly are poor, right? Why? Healthcare system, social security. So social security worked. It helped a lot of the older people out of misery. And remember, when you're old, you're not lazy. You can't work. Not only that, but you've helped build the country while you were working. So maybe the country should take care of you a little bit. But we just don't have the money. So we're going to have to come up with solutions. So here you have a few solutions. Let's go through them one by one. Privatizing Social Security. What does that mean? Well, this was an idea that was very popular under President Bush. He said, let's privatize Social Security. Now, that doesn't mean you stop paying taxes, okay? What it means is you pay taxes, you pay Social Security taxes. That money goes into a vault with your name on it. Now, you can't take that money and spend it on a HD, 3D TV or on a vacation. You can choose to invest that money so that it grows. You can invest it in the stock market, you can invest it in the real estate market, you can do whatever you want with it. And then if you're successful, by the time you retired, that money doubled, tripled, you have plenty of money, and then you have a golden retreat. Now, let's say this had been the system, let's just say at the beginning of the 21st century. So people take their social security money, invest it in the stock market, invest it in the real estate market, which is booming. Well, what happened in 2008? Well, we had our own recession, right? Some people are calling it the Great Recession. And what happened to the price of houses? It collapsed. What happened to the stock market? It crashed. So if we had had a privatized social security system, a lot of people would have lost their money, actually a lot more than did, and then what would have happened to all these people without any money? Like, let's say it's time for them to retire. No more money left over. So this, you know, it sounds like a good idea, but when you really think about it, it's probably way too risky for us to try. So let's try something else. Let's try Cutting spending. Now, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Our government should cut spending. Our government is going to have to cut spending. We can't afford all the things that we're doing. But if you remember the pie chart that we looked at, right, the very first slide, then you saw how difficult that is. You saw that you can't just say to the government, stop wasting money and then everything is going to be great. That's not going to be enough. The government is going to have to make hard choices. The government is going to have to cut into what? The military, healthcare, or social security. So I'm going to tell you, this is going to happen. The government is going to cut spending. They have to. I'm just not holding my breath for that. Hey, we're spending too much money on social security. Why don't we give out less money to social security recipients? Okay, we could do that. Um, two problems. First, let's say you worked hard, you saved up a lot of money, and then we tell you, you know what, we're gonna cut the amount of money you were supposed to receive. Well, you're gonna get, hold on. I worked hard all my life. I put money towards social security. You promised me that when I retired, I would get that money. 
and now you're saying I'm not getting it, right? So some people really wouldn't be happy about that. But let's say that you can convince them and you tell them, well, listen, you have to do your bit for the country and this is what you have to do, and they agree. Well, that'd be great, but you can't cut the social security check of the rest of the population precisely because these people then earn that much money all their life, right? Maybe they had the minimum, you know, a minimum wage job. Maybe they worked at Walmart, right? Maybe they worked, you know, at the plant in St. Paul. They don't have that much money saved over because they spent all their money on their children. So now they're old, they don't have that much savings and you're telling them, hey, we're not gonna give you the money. Well, how are they gonna live? So this is really hard to do. So, you know what? We actually get from things that look like they're great to things that are pretty good, to things that are hard, to things you might not even want to think about. Um, this is what's going to happen. I mean, it's already happening. A lot of elderly people are in retirement home. And you're going to have more of them because they won't have enough money to live on their own even with the social security check that we're giving. So you might not want to think about it. Now, you know, some children are taking care of their parents, and so these parents don't have to go to nursing homes. And you know what? This is actually how the world dealt with their social security problem ever since men has been men. Children have always been taking care of their parents when their parents became too old to work and to take care of themselves. Maybe we'll have to go back to some kind of system like that. I don't know what happened to, you know, our society that made it that children don't take care of their parents that much. Now, I know some of you do, but, you know, a lot of you are going to go, well, I really wish I could, but I'm in this city and my parents are in that city. Or, you know, they need, you know, professional medical help, so I can't. But this is what we used to do before. Now, you have the dreaded answer. Taxes. More taxes. How do you solve a problem? More taxes. You know what? When everything else fails, more taxes. No, 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 actually no. This is the first thing that the government is going to think about. The government is going to raise your taxes to pay for Social Security. You know it's going to happen. I don't have to convince you. We're not going to like it. It's not going to really solve the problem. But the government is still going to do it. And you see, this might be the biggest problem in finding a solution to Social Security. It doesn't seem that we can agree on what to do. If I took a poll of this class and I said, okay, how many of you want to cut the military? How many of you want to cut social security? How many of you want to reduce social security checks? You would get answers all over the place. We can't seem to agree on what to do to solve the social security problem. So I want to thank you for listening into my presentation. Goodbye.